I'm in Australia because I just love it here. Australian cooking is very much like the Australian character. Full of life, unpretentious, fresh and direct. And I love that. For me, the story of food is the story of home cooking. MKR has always been about real food cooked by real people in their real home. I am absolutely delighted to be going around our vast country again, to visit everyone's home and to experience the real taste of Australia. A world that doesn't have cooking would be miserable. <laughs> I don't cook for myself. I cook for other people, and that's how I show people that I love them. Food and cooking means family. I love it when they love it, because it makes me feel good. Cooking is how you pass your heritage on. We want to tell the story of our people. It connects emotions with food. Home cooking is where the heart is. That's the food that makes us feel safe. That's the food that makes us happy. I have one rule only in my kitchen. It's got to taste good. I take my role as an MKR judge very seriously. I mean, it's such an honor. I've come 17,000 kilometers to be here, so I've really worked up an appetite. I look forward to finding the best home cooks. Yeah. 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 Najila, we are honored to have you with us on MKR. I'm honored to be here. It's so wonderful to see you all. And I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be back in Australia. What a great time we're all gonna have. Cooking, chatting, and eating. <laughs> it's gonna be magnifique. But this is a competition. And you'll be judged on the food you cook for each other. After each of you has hosted your dinner party, the team with the highest score will advance directly to the semi-finals. Finding out that the top team is going straight through to the semi-finals adds that little bit more pressure, but it also makes you want to work that little bit harder, because that would be amazing. The team with the lowest score, however, will be eliminated. But in the end, only one team can become the MKR champions and win that $100,000 prize. $100,000 would be very big for us. Um, that's a lot of money, $100,000. life-changing. So, who is going first? From Tewton, Victoria, Peter and Alice, yes. you're up first. <laughs> I bloody love food, so I'm keen to give it a whirl. One little word of advice. I know this is a competition, but don't cook to impress. Cook to delight. So best of luck and welcome to MKR. Let's do this! We've got a chance now to change our lives. It's been a while since I've shown my heart How to live, live without each other The competition kicks off 116 kilometres from Melbourne in the small former gold mining town of Tewton, Victoria home to around 1,300 people including our father and daughter team, Peter and Alice oh, I'm mate. sick of this, can't they just be mixed and matched? No. Normally, they would be working in the cafe they run together. But today, they're setting up their instant restaurant. Are you nervous? I'm facing the day with some level of trepidation. How's that? Mm-hmm. I'm Peter. I'm Alice. And I run a cafe. 
We run a castle. <laughs> oh, shit. Right. I run a yes. cafe okay. in Castle Maine. Okay, all right, ready. I'm Peter. I'm Alice. I run a cafe in Castle Maine. We run a cafe in Castle Maine. Yes, we run a cafe in Castle Maine. <laughs> Off to a flying star. <laughs> now, in for a coffee? Yeah, lovely. Yeah, come over here and take a seat. And what do you do at the cafe, Dad? I work very hard, Alice. <laughs> I look after front of house. I make people feel welcome. Mm -hmm. I make a very good coffee. Mm, it takes 25 minutes to get. Dad! People have passed away waiting for their food from Dad. It's not exactly true, Alice, and there were mitigating circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't well to start with. <laughs> I think the thing I love about Alice the most is her passion. She has an extraordinary passion for life, for food, for people. It's huge. Mm, like my ass. <laughs> okay, I've right. got to do the table. Where's the tablecloth? In here. Peter and Alice have only five hours to set up their restaurant, shop for ingredients, and begin to prep their menu before the guest teams arrive. The name of our instant restaurant is the Antiques Food Show. Our home is full of trinkets and little treasures. Some people refer to them as junk. Do you want these? Family yeah. photos? Yes, yes, yes. Seemed yeah. apt that we're well, it is representing it is the family. This is our family in a room and our family on a plate. Absolutely. They can get to know all the dead relatives while they <laughs> wait for their food. Grandma would be beside herself. It's so dainty and classic like she was. Our family is everything to us. All right. The Antiques I'm... Food Show. Yeah, I think that looks pretty damn good, actually. It looks beautiful. Our theme is food and family, so I feel like it all meshes together beautifully. Come on, let's go. Yes, I'm coming. I've just got to lock the door. Give me the keys. I'm driving. All right. OK. Come on. With their instant restaurant set up, Peter and Alice I'm head out to shop for their ingredients. It's going to be a big day. So how are you feeling? I'm very nervous. Worried that the menu's too simple. Tonight for our menu, they are simple dishes based on my grandma's cooking. I spent a lot of time in the kitchen with grandma. She cooked with love, and I think because I loved her so much, I loved her food. That's the whole premise of the restaurant, is that it's simple food cooked well. I'll absolutely give it a good crack and try and make it up to grandma's standards and with as much love and heart as she used to, to make things. It's not just grandma's standards Peter and Alice's menu needs to meet. Manu and Nigella will also be judging, and they get a sneak peek ahead of tonight's instant restaurant. So my expectation with Peter and Alice, good food, obviously, and a lot of humour. I like the look of this. There's something about this that says home cooking. I mean, just through and through. I love family recipes. I love my own, and I love it when I'm entrusted with other people's. All right, so what are we getting? We need beef cheeks. G'day, Alice. G'day, Peter. How are you? Good, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. Oh. Pop the lot spawn. So, I need some beef cheeks. For the entree, we're making Sunday roast croquette with grandma's relish. The entree croquettes is based off the leftovers from a Sunday roast. So, we would have roast on a Sunday, and then Monday, grandma would have grated up the leftover veggies and the meat and make. I suppose, a bubble and squeak style meal, and this was our take on that. Okay. I think the croquette's going to be very hard to get right because I'm not quite sure how to have all the elements of a Sunday roast or even enough of the elements of a Sunday roast to make it recognisable in one croquette. If I were approaching a Sunday roast croquette, I think I'd find it easiest to get those flavours across if I went for chicken. OK. Have a good day. Thanks. Take See care. You There's so much about that croquette that makes me nervous. OK, right. let's go. Right. One more stop. I was on a mission. We had to get to Coles so that we could get home and start prepping. We need 22 lemons for the lemon delicious for the dessert. 22? 22. 22. Don't question me, do it. For dessert, we're making Grandma's Lemon Delicious Pudding, a standard family favourite made by my grandma and also Alice's grandma. 
Lemon delicious pudding is a very old-fashioned dessert, and it makes me smile. It's also known as lemon self-sourcing pudding, and it's a rather clever dessert because as it bakes, it forms two layers, a sponge above and the sauce underneath. Let's get the good salt. Nigella's coming for dinner. I am very vigilant with my shopping list. Oh, it was a military operation. Plain flour, mm -hmm. brown sugar, mm -hmm. white sugar, mm -hmm. pecans, mm -hmm. caster sugar, mm -hmm. self-raising flour, mm -hmm. baking powder. Mm -hmm. She was the general. Come on, Wed, whatever in the time. OK, yeah. I'll get you to calm down. All right. I think on the whole, we did pretty well. Well right. done. Made it. Peter and Alice right. have only three hours to prep their dishes before the guest teams arrive. Look, 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 look. Yeah, aprons. Is it mine? No, give it to me. Don't be so stupid. For the entree, we're making Sunday roast croquette with grandma's relish. I'm just going to get the veg on for the beef cheek because I need to get that on immediately. We won't have long until the guests arrive. So the key things that we need to achieve in our prep time is getting that beef cheek on. That's the most important thing. OK, just flouring the beef cheeks to go in to be seared before they go into the broth to cook nice and long and slow. It's kind of hard to imagine to put a Sunday roast in a croquette, I suppose. That's right. Obviously, I'm expecting big, bold, roasted flavours in there. It could be actually quite delicious if done well. Feeling the pressure. It is imperative that we get this beef cheek in. I didn't want to roast the beef cheek. I was concerned that if I had have roasted a piece of meat and somehow incorporated that into the croquette, that it would be tough and overcooked. Is that beef cheek boiling yet? Yep. So I braised the beef cheek because I knew that it would be tender and we get that gelatinous texture. Foul word, gelatinous. It's, it's, not. A, it's a disgusting it's word. It's not at all. Moist Con is a disgusting word. Gelatinous. No, I don't is mind not. moist, but <laughs> gelatinous. It's sort of. It was gelatinous. It's sort of. You just think of. I think you need to call the psychologist. <laughs> I'm just going to cut these tomatoes up for the relish, all right? Yeah. So the other important thing that we need to get done ahead of the guests arriving is the relish. I'll be more comfortable once I've got the relish in. Yeah. We wanted to use the relish because when I think of grandma, that's one of the things that instantly pops into my mind. We ate it with everything, anything that you could put it on, like even on toast, just with the relish. We would eat it. It was the best relish. Oh, yeah. So good. I mean, this is, a, I guess, a variation of that, Alice, isn't it? That it's got oh, the yeah. It took her a day to make it, didn't it? Everything needs to have to sit overnight and then it would just cook for hours and hours and hours. Relish takes a long time to reduce and cook together. Then having all the vegetables just binding the, uh, a little bit like a savoury jam. I think it just needs a lot of time and attention. I'll just chuck this in the microwave. We've never made the relish in the microwave in this quantity, have we? No. Normally, it would be made over a couple of days. We're doing this in two hours. We want the relish to be super thick. With the time constraint, there's a risk that it's not going to thicken in time. We've got 20 minutes to go. We need to go and get changed and come back and use whatever time we have wisely before the guests arrive. All right. Let's go. OK. Good to be part of the competition. Yeah, super exciting, but also extremely daunting. It's really exciting. We're finally here. This is crazy. First instant restaurant. How exciting. I'm so excited to meet the other teams. I can't wait to eat food. Oh my God, I feel like I'm gonna make my new best friend here. <laughs> I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs>
Hi, I'm Arnett. Hi, I'm Fuzz. And, and we, we are, are your fabulous Fijians. Oh my god, mud crabs! Food is central to our lives. Anywhere that we go, there's a feast. The Barry Mandini looks like you, actually. Look at it. Well, now that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> What we bring to the competition is our passion for Fiji and the food of the Pacific. I don't think people have ever experienced a team like us. To family and to good times. If we had one thing to say to the other teams, it would be, watch out. Hey. Hey. Wow, <laughs> look at this. So lovely. Hi, oh, your look coats you are just Hello. amazing. Um, I think you'll find that MKR stands for Mary Kate Rules. I'm Kate, I'm 38 years old. I'm Mary, I'm 57 years old. And we're radiation therapists from Queensland. Cotaletta, yep. they, they're putting that with a oyster blade. I am a food snob. I don't know if that's gonna work. So one of our biggest hobbies is going to new restaurants and critiquing them. Maybe the octopus salad to go with it so we've got some green. What do you think? Love. If I didn't like someone's food, <laughs> I will try very hard to be constructive, but I probably won't be able to hide it. Cheers! And if their food isn't as good as ours, well... Tough titties! <laughs> Lovely to see people. Yeah. So good. was pumped. How fabulous. I was really excited to like meet everyone and just get all the juice. Is everybody ready? Yeah. yeah. Let's, do it. Let's do it. They're here. Quick. Got Let's it. go. Got it. We've got to get the got door. <laughs> when we heard the door, it was actually sort of that oh god moment, wasn't it? When your heart they're, they're falls out of here. your ass. <laughs> I'm not sure you can say that. <clears throat> they let um, it out. Hang on. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's go. I'm so excited to make You ready? Yeah. Door open, and the first thing I thought was, oh my God, those smiles are humongous. Mm. You're walking to someone's home and his family. Welcome to Trenton. Hello. 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 They were so welcoming. I think her smile, like, yeah. literally <laughs> took up half of her yeah. head. Oh, lovely to meet you. And welcome. You. Welcome. Yeah, well, uh, it's lovely to Come see you. Oh, Hi, mate. How are you going? Dad and I have spent all day in the kitchen together, so it's really nice to just see another ten people, to be perfectly honest with you. All right. Oh, oh, oh my, my God. God. This is so cool. So beautiful. Oh, wow. This is so beautiful. This is awesome. Oh, wow. For me, it looked like an antique shop. No, amazing. There was actually a lot going on. Oh, my God. The grandma on the wall. Yeah, that was Her definitely... Her eyes follow you around the room. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our home. I'm Peter, and this is my eldest daughter, Alice. Hello, Hello. and welcome to our instant restaurant, the Antiques Food Show. Yeah. So... <laughs> As you can see, the room is filled with beautiful things, but these beautiful things come with uh, memories and stories. Our instant restaurant is about family and love. Our philosophy was that there was always room at the table for somebody else. It didn't matter if it was a family member, a friend or a stranger. And we hope that by the end of this, that you will feel like part of our family. Peter and Alice, they look yeah. really kind, yeah. really yeah. friendly. 100% welcoming. We should leave you to enjoy, and, and we've got some stuff to do. Cook some food. Yeah. 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 Regardless of how they were feeling in the kitchen, if they were feeling under pressure or whatever, they, they still made that us they feel under welcome. too much pressure. Yeah. yeah. So nice. I firstly wanted to say power to those guys for having us over oh, and being the first being people. Fun. Yeah. We're here and we're very happy. I'm it's very excited to be here. Very excited. Well, I think we've got a really fun mix. No, it it's is. very exciting. So, everybody, cheers, cheers to the first instant yeah. restaurant. Yeah. Cheers, cheers. Love to meet you all. So good to meet everybody. Yeah. Cheers. 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 <laughs> well, let's go around the table. Should we go? Yeah, yeah. Tell yeah. us. Yeah. Um, we're boring. And we just have two boys, and all we do is cook, because all they do is eat. Yeah, <laughs> Loving you is a fantasy. I'm Ashley. And I'm Matt. And we're husband and wife from Margaret River. 
We have been together for 18 years. Is it really that long? Yes, a very long wow. time. Are you crying? No, just, <laughs> just from the oh gigs. God, I've lost 18 yeah, yeah. years. I'm so, <laughs> my heart. Good job, guys. She is a very good mum. She takes care of all us kids. <laughs> no! I've gone around the back. You've got to go. Half an hour more. Go. Go away. Let's get lost in paradise. Guys. We love our kids. All we do is go footy club, winery. Footy <laughs> club, <laughs> winery. One of those two things they love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, you know. Squeeze in a brewery every now and then. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to even it out. But, um, yeah, that's that's our story. They've been married for 18 years. 18 years, yeah. Wow, that's a long time. Might have so, some tips. I know. Yeah. Well, you go. All home. right, well, I'm, I'm Stephen and... I'm Freena. And... And we're from Adelaide. Um, <laughs> we're engaged. Oh, <laughs> oh, congratulations. Congratulations. That's awesome. <laughs> I got lucky. Got lucky with this little hamster. We met at a party after seven months. Decided it was time to pop the question. When you know, you know. You like? That's going to be my wife. My looks like... We are so different to each other. Yeah. Two different people from two different countries. Ying and Yang. Yang. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's love. We're going to get married in about five months. Some of that, yeah. Very, very exciting. Nice. Five months they're married, you know, it's definitely... They um, love each other. I think it's cute. Oh, I think you I can send it. We, we don't We show touch. our love. <laughs> <laughs> we show our love. <laughs> but, Through, but, like, back but, slaps and yeah, yeah. knuckles and <laughs> That's not <definitely>, touching. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um... It's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I'm Janelle, but I like being called Nell because Janelle Nell. sounds like I'm getting in trouble. <laughs> so I don't like and it. Nell's, Nell's very pretty. Thank you. And I'm Monzi, but my nickname is Mons. Easy. Mons. Mons. Uh, yeah. Or Mons Pond Mons. salad dressing. <laughs> 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 I'm a cake decorator. It's a lot of fun. It is. It's very stressful though. You wouldn't think so. Oh, I think it is. Baking's very stressful. It is. Yeah, because you have to follow recipes to You the, have to follow to recipes. The yeah. Yeah. And you can't just freestyle. No. Have <laughs> <laughs> you need a wedding cake? Um, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. <laughs> My friends call me the Kim Kardashian of cakes. I own a cake decorating business in Sydney. My favourite thing about making cakes is you start from nothing and you end up with something beautiful, special, and sweet. I love them. Thank you. I'm Turkish and Filipino. And I'm Sudanese. So we're bringing a lot of flavour to the table. A lot of flavour. A lot of spice. <laughs> but then, of course, your dessert will come out and I'll be like, this is so professional. Oh, God, no pressure. I'm just seeing the expectations. Oh, no. like... Janelle is a cake decorator by trade. That absolutely scared the bejeebas out of me because I cannot decorate a cake to save my yeah. life. The expectations are quite high now. Now I'm expecting something really, yes. really, really good. And I'll be scoring her appropriately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, smells delicious, Alice. When I pulled the beef cheek for the entree, which is the croquette, out of the jus, it was beautiful. It was melty, it was gelatinous, it was just falling apart. Just going to give it a mixy mix, and then we can roll right, them. Yeah. I've got to pull the beef cheek apart and mix it in with the potato to form the inside of the croquette. And then it'll be a bit thicker? Uh, well, it's rolling all right. And, and the colour's wonderful. The croquettes naked were looking interesting. Perhaps a little bit like something your dog would leave on the front lawn. But that's OK, cos they were going to be coated and we weren't going to see that. <laughs> who's excited for Nigella? Me. 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 I was just about to say, who's excited I'm obsessed. Manu. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I know, but Nigella. <laughs> She's the queen. I reckon Nigella is going to love our instant restaurant. Yeah. I think the theme and the vibe and the cooking is really up her alley. 
Manu's a chef, she's a home cook, a very successful home cook. And our food is, you know, wholesome, hearty. She's the perfect judge for this. Yes. Until Nigella and Manu walk through the door, I just don't believe it. I can't believe that they're coming to Tewton for dinner. So until we open those doors and I've got them in my tight little arms, I just don't believe it's happening. Yeah. I know you won't give away all your secrets, but have you got any tips for me? I don't think I've got tips, but the fact that I've got a bit of the chefy hat on and you've got the big home cook hat on, I think <laughs> you and I are married in heaven. In the end, we can talk like this is a chef's attitude, this is a cook's attitude, but we're both just interested in eating good food. Yeah, that's so it. In the end, that's the thing that matters. That's right. It's a bit like cooking for royalty, isn't it, Dad? Well, we've got, got the, the queen, the queen of, of food and the king of food. Shall we? Oh, go on, I'm not doing it. Oh, my God. Ah. Oh, my God, they're here. Are you hungry? Very. Yeah, you need to All right. Oh, Ready. Lordy. Oh, oh. Nigella looks like she has this beam of light around her. She's just stunning. And, I mean, Manu's pretty gorgeous as well. You've got to let him go, remember? I never let him go. You've got to let him go. <laughs> I'm really jealous of all of you sitting so close to them. <laughs> so there's an empty seat next to me. And of course it's a 50-50 that it's going to be Nigella. What about if saucy Nige is right there? I know, or is she going to be like... here? I have been manifesting <laughs> Nigella sitting next to me since I knew that I was in the competition. Once Nigella walked in, I was absolutely filled with butterflies. <laughs> Smiling faces, that's what I like to see. Yes, you both look very lovely. Her skin, <laughs> her hair looks lovely tonight. God, cobalt's a great colour for her. <laughs> We're a little bit starey. <laughs> total creep? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, total creep. I'm so excited for all of us. We're here to have gorgeous food and sharing it with a table full of gorgeous people. And, you know, I can't think what else matters in life. We are back. I'm better than ever, baby. Welcome to our home and welcome to our instant restaurant, The Antiques Food Show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I can see why... I can see why it's called that. Nigella, my grandfather loved you dearly and it was something that him and I did together when I was younger. We watched oh my God, your that's cooking so shows. I'm not sure he was super interested in the cooking aspect of it, but he certainly loved watching her on the telly. And to have you here, he would be beside himself with yeah, tears. So well, I can leave now, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> mum mum was pretty funny. <laughs> It's funny because when I, uh, uh, when I knew that Nigella was uh, joining me, I was like, that's it, I'm going to be second from now on. <laughs> yeah, fishing yeah, the waters. I don't, oh, yeah. I, mean, I don't think you have to worry about that. <laughs> Poor Manu. <laughs> I think Manu's OK. <laughs> I think he's OK. All right. Well, if you would like to lift your domes and remove your scroll, your menu awaits. If I can. <laughs> Don't break anything. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful, oh, Peter. Oh, that's seal. OK, I'm unrolling my scroll. <laughs> wow. Our entree is what we've called a Sunday roast croquette with grandma's relish. Yum. That dish is one that was a twist on the leftovers. Yum. So after Mum had done a roast, there was always leftover veggies and leftover meat. So Alice has whipped that around into a rather tasty little dish. 
and we're serving it with, with mum's relish. I feel like there was so much pressure on Alice's face because she really wanted to make her family proud. So it is a lot of pressure to make the recipes that you've eaten your whole life. And then for Maine, we have a parmesan crumbed lamb cutlet with minted peas, silver beet and salsa verde. It's one thing to go, I'm going to throw a modern twist on a Sunday roast croquette and then serve quite a traditional kind of meal afterwards. I just, I don't know, for me, I just sort of was like... Oh, oh, you, didn't, you didn't think it was cohesive? I don't, oh, it didn't make great sense to me. Lamb cutlets are the prized possession of our family. Grandma's lamb cutlets were, I mean, horrendously overcooked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if it had any shade of pink in it, Grandpa would be complaining that it was still mooing on the plate. I definitely really enjoy... Love a, a lamb cutlet. Love a cutty. Yeah, really nice. And our dessert tonight is Grandma's Lemon Delicious Pudding. I actually don't know what Lemon Delicious no, is. No, I have an inkling of what it might be, but a lot of these older recipes, you'd never know how they've made it. Is it an older recipe? Yeah, it's Shouldn't an you know recipe. it then? When yeah. you born like the 50s? If I was, I'm looking good for my age, that's for sure. May fortune smile on you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And can't wait. Good luck. We'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Oh, they're lovely. Oh, this is so cute. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, here's to all of you. Cheers. Thank you Thank for you. inviting Thank me you. here, Manu. Oh. Oh. Charming. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, how amazing. So exciting. So that surreal. was extraordinary. That would well, be yours. Yes, this, this is mine. mine. OK, now we've got to cook them good food and we've got to get done. Ashley and Matt, the entree. So there was croquettes with Grandma's relish. Your thoughts? What do you think you're going to get? I'm pumped for this because yeah. I am definitely partial to a roast mm -hmm. and Definitely partial to a croquette, so that's kind of all the good things in life. Literally yeah. rolled into one. So I think it'd be a leftover chicken roast, which is foreign to us because we never have any leftovers. <laughs> so I, I don't quite know what we do with it. It's going to be homely. It's probably an old-fashioned croquette. <laughs> yeah. You know, to have the, the flavours of a massive roast into something so small. It's going to be pretty amazing with um, a nice sweet tomato relish. It's interesting because you did assume like it would be a tomato -y relish, which well, I hadn't thought that at first. I was thinking a bit like a chutney, so I thought, will there be apple, like apple and mustard? Apple not, maybe beetroot. Not, because, oh. yeah, oh, maybe. Really. Oh, oh, dear. Like a, okay, okay yeah. if it's beetroot, just eat very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about relish because I love my relish. I have jars and jars of them. Yeah. Yes, I'm a bit of a condiment queen. Yeah. <laughs> if they nail this, it's going to be good. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. I can't wait. Wow. So I don't know if this is hostile or not, but I'm too nosy, so I want to see what's happening. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. If my jelly comes into the kitchen while I'm in the middle of something, oh, I'm going to faint. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, me more says. Oh, get out. Oh, get Nigella. Out Sorry, no, I'm. No, off. I am. Nigella. <laughs> Nigella came to visit us in the kitchen. Oh my goodness, me. I like the whole big breading station. Yes, yes. Getting it done in bulk. Oh, as you. Those are the naked ones. Yes, there's a little naked one, and we're having uh, no, it so in so a crunchy see... hut. Uh, 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 have you trademarked that? <laughs> Not um, <yet. laughs> so that's darker looking than I thought, because I thought it would be more like potato bound. I think the croquettes are going to be very, very hard to get right because that's mashed potato. And when you think of Sunday roast, you think of roast potato. May I? Yeah. Of course. Dip your spoon. Thank you. Oh my God, my mm. jam is dipping her spoon in our kitchen. Hang on. <laughs> Mm. She tasted my relish. We just want to know where to put the spoon she'd lick so we can sell it later. <laughs> we'll give it to Uncle Michael for Christmas. <laughs> so, we're ready soon to eat? Not that I'm trying to make Not you feel... Uh, <laughs> putting the pressure on. I'll just take one now. No, no, no pressure. No. Nigella did mention that she was hungry, so that put a little bit more pressure on to try and get this entree out quickly. 
Thank you, Thank darling. You, See you later. Bye now. ta -da. Bye. We need to feed her. We need to start frying those little bad boys. All right, I'll put those down. The croquette should be crispy on the outside and soft in the middle with that beautiful potato and beef flavour. We'll get the next lot in here. It's our first course going out now, Dad. The very first course of the competition. I want to open on a bang. I really tried to make the croquettes up to grandma's standards and with as much love and heart as she used to make things. Right, do you want to relish this? Yes. Yeah, yeah get well. on that now. And then it's got that beautiful sweet relish over the top of it and garnished it with micro herbs. They've got to go out while they're hot. Right, Manu. Nigella, let's go, darling. Let's go. Let's go. Please don't fall over. Who, me? Yes, you. <laughs> It smells so good. Oh, right. a moment we've been waiting for. Entree, Entree is served. served. Fabulous. I thought this is a really generous serve. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah. That looked really, really good. Crispy, crunchy. Yeah. That's a good portion. Like, I am so happy about it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. I thought the micro herbs were a little messy, actually, on top. And I thought the pieces of tomato were too big mm. for me. I'm unfurling. Oh, oh you just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm following. Yeah. Right. They are so poker-faced. They don't give away anything. There is nothing on my face but sheer terror. Because you're not only standing there physically, but you're also sitting on the plate. never watched anybody eat so intently and they gave away nothing. You may return to the kitchen. Thank you. See you later. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Uh, 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 uh. You've got to wear the bon appetit, my yeah. friend. Yeah. Yeah. Have you not watched the yeah. show? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> bon appétit. <laughs> the crunch is good. Mm. I don't know what I was eating, but I ate something good. <laughs> that was good, that like, was decent dish. I love the rusticness of biting into the chunks of potatoes, <laughs> you know. That brings back some homely memories. It was yummy. Like, as you see, I finished it. I really enjoyed it. Some of the other contestants really loved the croquettes. And perhaps that is indicative of their kind of palate. For me, I just wonder if maybe perhaps a little bit more seasoning in the croquet itself and perhaps a little less sugar or the sweetness in the relish, I think would have just lifted that balance for me a little bit. I think they missed the thought of a good Sunday roast. I think they missed that completely. You're right? I'm not holding your hand, don't be so no. stupid.
Peter and Alice. First to coke tonight. It's a big deal, isn't it? A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. My first thought was, if I did close my eyes and add a bite of this, would I be tasting a Sunday roast? And my answer is not really. What kind of meat did you use? Beef cheek. So not roasted then? No. More braised? Yes. But when I read roast, I got something different. I would have put more spice and seasoning in there as well. So I think the idea of it is magical, it's fantastic. But I think you missed the point. Teeny bit more seasoning, or maybe I would have thought some sage or some onion inside it to make you think of a stuffing, or something like that, just to give it a bit of zhuzh. Oh, shit. <laughs> Paraphrasing, of course. A radish takes, I think, a lot of love and a lot of cooking. And I feel that even though that you've got that sweet and sour balance, I don't think it's cooked long enough to come together. A relish, it's more like a jam. It all needs to be getting together. I felt it was a bit too sweet and a bit too vinegary or sharp, and yet somehow you managed to turn that into a positive because the sweetness and the vinegariness balanced themselves, so it gave a kind of jaunty zing suddenly. And I think that was good with the croquettes. And I think it's such a brilliant idea what you did. It's both heartwarming and witty in a way, which I think is a lovely thing. The idea was great, but the execution just needed a little bit of work. Show us what you can do with the main course. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Thanks, guys. My heart went out to them. It was the first dish of the whole competition, yeah. and there was a lot of pressure on that dish. Yes. <sighs> OK, well, that was... Yeah. Alice was devastated. When you got back to the kitchen, you weren't... weren't happy, were you? Would have been nice to start off on a... High note. High rather than being there. Anyway. <laughs> Whatever. We've just got to put it behind us and... Move forward and try and get this one right, I guess. The critique affected her and she was pretty miserable. So, what are we doing? It was actually very hard to try and pull her back and get her motivated. Do we need to just go and sit for a minute? No, we don't have time to sit for a we minute. We do have time no, to sit don't. for a minute. No. When you cook for other people, the food on the plate is a representation of yourself and your family because obviously they're family recipes. So to not have executed the food well, I was bloody heartbroken. I didn't really want to keep going. I just wanted to go and hide in a hole somewhere. I don't know what to do. I'm so rattled. No, right, well, well no. <laughs> First dish of the night, you want to start off with a bang. Very, very upset with myself for not being able to execute that properly. Bloody heartbroken. All right, so how are we going to manage this, the main course? For the main, we're having parmesan crumbed lamb cutlets with minted peas, silver beet and salsa verde. We've got the chops, 40 cutlets to crumb and cook to perfection for the main course. So what are we doing? The sides need to be done as well. The minted peas and the silver beet. We'll just focus on those for the time being and clear our head. It was actually very hard to get her motivated. Well, that's all right. Yeah, leave, leave all of this to me. If you don't feel something's gone exactly as you want it, it does kind of take the energy out of you, but it's so important not to let that stop you going forward, because otherwise it does take well, changes. Yeah. And if something goes wrong, it's too late, it's gone. You keep on thinking of that instead of thinking of these, you know. 
you want me to keep an eye on that for you? I look for that. Right. Um... Knock, knock. Oh, God. Oh, heavens. Hello, Manu. Someone calls Welcome. me God and someone calls me Evans. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you uh, laugh a little bit. Oh, yeah. You've got to but, laugh. You've got to laugh. But Alice is not. Um, uh, yeah, she might not be laughing. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's a hard gig. Well, you have to be honest. Are you feeling now? You, you're back on track or are you still ang angry with me? I'm not angry with me at all. <laughs> I'm just I'm angry with myself. But why? You don't want to, you, you shouldn't be angry with yourself. Manu obviously could see in the critique that I was absolutely mortified. She should turn this negative in positive, saying, OK, this is gone, this is done. Nothing yep. I can do about it. Yeah. So if you're still angry and then you're cooking this... It's going to come through. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. So sweep it under okay. the carpet. I'll shake it off. I love Manu. So to have him come down and just give me a bit of a shake and, and let me know that I could do it, that put me in really good stead to just pull up my big girl pants and push forward. It's always nice to have a pep talk from one of your idols. He knows what he's talking about and... That's exactly right. Husband and wife, or just... You know, <laughs> he wishes. <laughs> All the teams were friendly. And everyone was just so keen to find out about everyone else yep. and, and tell their stories and hear everyone else's, and yeah. it was just like, woof. You look like you've been on TV. Yeah. And, like, very Ben Affleck-ish. Oh, my God! I'll actually, I'll take oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll absolutely take that. Oh, ben Affleck. And his money. All his money. <laughs> Freena said to Matt that he looks like Ben Affleck. And I think she needs to go to the optometrist. <laughs> I'm J-Lo. I was going to say, well, then she's J-Lo. You are attractive, wildly attractive. I just don't think you look like Ben Affleck. No. So we've got... a. Uh, Parmesan crumbed lamb cutlets with minted peas, silver beets, and salsa verde. So silver beet is what I would call charred, isn't it? Yes, exactly. indeed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, so I see you as a lamb cutlets and minted peas type of a person. <laughs> I may be wrong. A good cutlet is definitely close to my heart. I'm, I'm keen. I think it sounds really, really nice. Matt and I cook lamb, but we have to sometimes hide it from the kids. Uh, it's too expensive to <laughs> feed them the amount that they yeah. want. We try and hide it, but they can smell it and they come running. The thing that'll make this dish win or lose is how well that lamb is cooked. I love lamb. We're from Fiji. All about the lamb, darling. Fiji, we, we love lamb. Perfectly. Like, we perfectly. love lamb. Anyone who doesn't like a crumb lamb cutlet is a, um, is a crazy person. Um, I, I, would, I would love it to be very pink and, uh, and blush inside, and I'd like it to be crispy. I think we're kind of quite agreed so far. I love lamb cutlets. Uh, difficult. The danger is the lamb itself mustn't be cooked for too long or it'll go beyond pink, now, which is, I, for me, the ideal way of eating lamb. I'm really excited about the salsa verde yeah, exactly. with the parmesan crumbed lamb. Minted peas, I'm not, I'm not that excited about. I think it's kind of a boring combination with lamb. Controversial. I'm ready. <laughs> you bet. Oh, this, so, this conversation has made me very, very, uh, yeah. very hungry. <laughs> How is the flavour? I think a little bit of salt, and I think you're right that it needs more mint. The main is quite a simple dish. Parmesan crumbed lamb cutlets with silver beet, minted peas, and salsa verde. Every element on the plate has got to be perfect and it's got to work well together. We want them to be pink on the inside, crunchy on the outside. Grandma loved a crumb. She even crumbed a sausage. <laughs> Why would you crumb a sausage? I don't know. She felt it would elevate the dish to a new level. <laughs> We might put the salsa verde on last. How are you going with chops? Yeah, I'm nearly done. The hardest part of the dish is cooking the lamb cutlets. If they sit in the pan too long, the crumb's gonna burn, and then it goes on the plate, it's gonna rest too long, and the meat's gonna be overcooked. Just need a little wind to get me through dessert. It's the cutlet that's the real hero of the dish, and... If I can get it that blushing pink colour, then hopefully it'll spread some joy around the table. We're just on the home straight, Alice. Yeah, I'm just putting a little bit of the salsa verde in there. 
hopefully Grandma would be proud of us. All right, well, let's go. Main course is served. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to it. Mm. Thank you. I was a little bit nervous putting the plate down in front of the judges after the entree. It's critical that this dish hits the mark. Thank you. You're welcome. It actually looked beautiful. It was so crusted lamb cutlass. They looked golden. The vegetables were mm. green. When that main came out, first thing I thought was, oh, there's only two pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Um, terrified that that lamb cutlet is overcooked and we're not going to know until their knife goes through it. I'm about to faint. I'm lost in pink. It was that beautiful blush that Alice talks about. This one was right on. Sister. <laughs> Bon appétit. Nigella's picking up this lamb cutlet and chewing on the bone, then it's got to be pretty good. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I very much ate that like a Fijian would. My gosh. I looked around the table and I saw how everybody else had politely sort of just, you know, left a little bit on. I was like, nah, no, I am no, no, stripping no. this thing down. If anyone's got any food left over, I'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> the seasoning was spot on, cooked really, really well. I mean, I was eating them off the bone, so it was really, really good. That was, that was good. Yeah. yeah. If I was at home, I would have been chewing on the bone until <laughs> it split. <laughs> this meal, for me, was a lot more cohesive than their entree. I think they did a really, really solid little effort. You know, everything was just spot on. I tick, tick. Boom. Yeah, that was yummy. My lamb loved it, but a bit more parmesan would have been perfect for me. Phenomenal for you. I'm a little bit jealous of his <laughs> plate because I can see that his was a bit more pink and a bit more softer, but mine was too well done. And at like a couple of bites, it was a bit chewy. And I was just, <laughs> I was just looking at his plate. I'm like, oh, Stephen, more pink. You, you should have swept. <laughs> oh. You've blown it, mate. <laughs> it's just as well as you found out now. <laughs> we were happy with what we had on the plate. It was still a little bit nerve-wracking, wasn't it? Hmm. You never know what they're going to say or what they're going to think, so it was terrifying. Let me start by saying that the lamb cutlets were cooked absolutely perfectly. Pink, tender, crunchy on the outside from the pumice crumbs. All the vegetable component from the silver beet to the peas, absolutely well seasoned. The salsa verde though, uh, I think would have needed a lot more, a lot, lot more olive oil. Very intense flavor. Uh, and I think the olive oil would have made it a little looser in flavor, but looser in texture as well. So that's the criticism. I understand what you're saying, that it isn't a salsa verde in, in, in terms of a sauce that you would drizzle on, but you converted me with your version because I thought that rather sparse splodging meant that 
It didn't invade the crumb. It didn't suddenly make the crumb greasy. And it was like a few little piquant bits of punctuation. And I like that. I think this was just a joyful plate of food. I mean, it was so lovely. I thought the lamb was cooked perfectly. One of the many reasons you were put on this world is to put crumbs on things and then fry them. <laughs> <laughs> now, apart from the fact that your grandmother would probably be horrified at how pink the lamb was, I think, you know, she'd have felt really proud. And you should feel proud of yourself. These dishes are super special, super important. Family is everything, so I mm. really wanted to get it right. And, I'm... and you did, and it, and it tasted of that. It tasted like the best kind of family food. What you want food to do is just bring you, flood you with pleasure and transport you to a very happy place. And it did. You know, it tasted happy. It's a great job on the main course. Thank you very much. You can smile. <laughs> to get that beautiful review from both Manu and Nigella. It was the boost I needed to pull myself together and push through to the last course. Oh, thank God for that. That was so good. So good, such good feedback. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, it must have been good feedback. <laughs> I don't think I've had one of these since 1998. I got a hug. Well, it'll be on camera now, so you can treasure it. Oh, okay. replay. Rewind, replay, rewind. <laughs> So we've got the fuel that we need to get the dessert out. It's not going to take long. We've made it before. You've made it for years. And it's going to knock their socks off. We've had a good course. We've had a not so good course. We need another good course to pull this off. Right, we'll just make sure we get it right, because this is the last hurrah. For dessert, we're making grandma's lemon delicious pudding. Can you check if these are light and fluffy enough? It's a sponge pudding. It's probably a step down from a souffle. All right, beautiful, let's right. go. The dish, when it goes out, we're hoping will be a soft, silky sponge and then this beautiful, rich lemon custard underneath so that when you put your spoon in, you pick up the sponge coated with that custard. We need the water level to be right because I want sponge on top yep. and I want uncooked lemon syrup down the bottom. Yep. The way Mum used to make it was in a casserole dish and it was just scooped out in generous portions into a dessert bowl, blob of cream on top and away you went. I wanted to present it slightly different to that. I wanted to follow the theme that we'd established in the instant restaurant. This batter's coming along nicely. Yeah. So I thought it'd be lovely if it was actually presented and cooked in a teacup. Do you want to bring that cup over here and just test it one more time? You're doing 12 individual portions, so cooking it individually is going to be a risk because the teacups aren't the same, they're not the same shape, they're not the same height. Just make sure that's the right water level. Yeah, that'll be yeah? fine. Good. Yeah. If the water's too high, it's going to slow down the cooking. If the water's too low, you're not going to have any custard because the whole thing will have cooked. There's a real science to it. All right. I will actually have to take them out, I think. Oh, God, Dad. Oh, sorry. The way those cups were floating in the water bath... <laughs> I can't manoeuvre with this jug. Well, I can hold it. Mm -hmm. I've got blobs of Lemon Delicious pudding floating in the water bath. Can you just get that in the oven? The sooner we can get the puddings in the oven, the sooner they're going to cook. It's got to be in there for the right amount of time to be successful. You know what Lemon Delicious is. I do know what Lemon Being, I was being really a much more mature No, person. I realise it's generational. <laughs> it is You and I know what a is. Lemon Delicious yes. is. And it's a very comforting pudding. And so is it traditionally more light or is it yeah, the, or the, quite heavy? No, it's, it's, it's it separates into yes. two layers. Yeah. Right. It's quite magical, actually, because yeah. when you put the batter in, oh. you go, you look at it and you go, uh, and you can't imagine how that's going to happen. But, but it does. It does. Mm. I, I'm, I feel like we're, we're an upward trajectory right now, so I'm like, this is going to be a, this is going to be a good end for them. Look, I'm Fijian. Anything with citrus, that's my jam. All I can say is I hope it tastes lemony and is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> the cooking time on this lemon delicious pudding is absolutely critical because you've got to get that sponge pudding, probably two thirds, and then a third of the custard. Stop opening it because I you're letting the heat it. out. My Helen opened it. I saw you do it. Dad's checking the puddings, but he's doing it with the oven open. So, of course, the hot air is escaping. Top ones aren't cooked. That's right. They're almost cooked. They look raw. They've got no colour. Yeah. But they're spongy when you touch them. 
That's how you tell us if a sponge right. is cooked. All right. The puddings actually feel OK on the top. Are you pulling them out? Yep. If I scold myself... I don't care, as long as we get the dessert out. We've pulled the desserts out, but we haven't made a spare, so we can't put the spoon in to check whether they're cooked or not. Right, you've got to hustle. I've touched the top of them. The sponges sprung back nicely. I actually think we might be OK. I'm going to come in with the piping bag and I'm going to start garnishing. The exciting component of the dessert is the sauce. When you put your spoon through the pudding to the bottom of the dish and the pudding comes up coated in that lovely sauce, and it's just oh, magic. Biscuit crumb was up. We didn't have the best entree. We pulled back with a great main. Our score and our night is depending on this dessert. I'm thinking beautiful pink Tuscan for Nigella and the blue for Manu. For Manu. All right, beautiful. The blue for Manu. Oh my do, God. do, 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 do. Dessert is served. Thank you. Thank you. I was so excited. Yeah, it looked really Dessert good. Dessert in a teacup. You know, I thought it was the cutest thing I'd ever seen and yeah. it fit their theme so well. I did expect maybe a more sort of, like, because it's a grandma, yeah. so I expected, like, a rustic a grandma piece. Cup. Grandma would have given you a bigger serve, you know. Of grandma it. put me on a diet. <laughs> Our night is depending on this dessert. And until the judges put their spoons in there, we're not going to know whether it's cooked or not. I saw a drop drip from Nadella's spoon and I knew that it was all over. Yeah. The spoon went into the pudding too quickly. It just went bang. Seriously devastating. Thank you, guys. See you later. Thank you very much. Enjoy. This is a pudding I've made every week for 30 years. I have to make it once for 12 people, and it's a disaster. Oh, dear. Well, that's a bit sad. Sad? I guess. Okay. I was absolutely gutted that the dessert wasn't cooked. Anyway. It is what it is. I was expecting resistance, and I just went straight down <laughs> to the bottom of the cup, and it was watery as hell, and I was like, oh, no. It was a bit... It was wet. Down. It definitely seems like something didn't go to plan. I felt like a pit in my stomach. I was like, oh my goodness. Because we really wanted them to do well after that entree. And on top of that, it was the added pressure of it being a relative's recipe. Yes. I personally, I would put the pudding on the saucer and I would have put the sauce in the cup and served it like that, and then I would have poured the sauce over it. And that's what I would have done if you want to use the teacup really badly. But I would not bake it in there because it's an inconsistent bake. I'm really sad for them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'm really sad for them. It's a shame. Yeah, it's a, it is a shame. I literally thought the whole time, Grandma on the wall over <laughs> there, oh. she would not have been happy no, about I... that lemon delicious. Ay, ay, ay. Pity and Alice, for dessert, you cooked grandma's lemon delicious pudding. Or not cooked, sorry. Ouch. The flavour profile is exactly what it's supposed to be. The top layer was just set, and it was pleasurable. 
But then suddenly uh, the spoon just kind of went to the bottom. And it's just pretty much a liquid soup. You know, it's really heartbreaking. This wasn't cooked the way your grandma made it, was it? No, no, she always did it in a casserole. And have you tried making it yes, in yes. these before? I've never done it in that quantity. I've done it in smaller, smaller quantities. Mm. It's, a, it's a, probably a risky pudding to cook for 12 at once in individual cups. When you put four cups in the oven, oven yeah. versus 12, who's going to take more heat yeah. to each cup? It's definitely not the recipe because it's your grandmother's recipe. She's done it thousands of times. It's the perfect choice, actually, in terms of balance for the old menu. And it's just like, it happened on the wrong night. And I'm sorry. It's not your fault. I know, but I mean, I said, so I just feel I wanted to see you with a smile back on your face. Thank you, guys. It was our last chance of redemption. And unfortunately, we just didn't didn't get it right. While Peter and Alice wait anxiously in the kitchen, their fellow competitors must judge their instant restaurant and give it a score out of 10. Peter and Alice, first cab off the rank. Let's start from the top, the entree. Sunday roast croquette with grandma's relish. A good portion. I'm very happy with that. <laughs> yeah, I think for an entree, though, I think it might have been like maybe too many. I like the potatoes, they reminded me of a home. I like the crunchy bits, but I thought it didn't actually have the roast in the flavor. No, nah, like, I mean, I, I expected like a pop of roast, and yeah. I just did not get that pop of roast, unfortunately. Alice and Peter's mine, course. The crumbed lamb cutlets. Yep, that Mint was. Mint peas, silver beak. Delicious. So good. I like the salsa verde. Yeah, I spread nice. mine over the top yeah. of my lamb cutlet. If we go then to the dessert, dessert. I think for me it was inedible. Yeah. I do think that they had the flavours right, and especially with Lemon Delicious, if they'd left it in the oven for a little bit longer, I think it would have been OK. We kind of started average, went up great, and then fell back down to, to just not good at all. I'm, I'm going to say probably somewhere in the middle, we should say about a five. I think, yeah, it'll be five. I think it's a five. It was not. It felt really bad putting, putting a number on someone's family's history. Yeah, that was hard. I think for the, you know, the effort and everything they put in. Yeah, I, I would I would give them a six, I think. I think so. I think for their main, definitely. As, as bad as the dessert was, we had a really nice time being there, and yeah. so that's why we gave them a six. Mm. I'm comfortable with a five. Are you comfortable with a five? Six. OK, oh. we'll give them a six. Mm. I'm going to go for a five out of ten. Yeah, I, I believe that's the... Good? Yeah. What do you reckon? Four points? Four points is between four and five. No, four. OK. OK. We'll I think four. Four. OK. You're very hard, girl. No. <laughs> I don't think that's fair. I think they know their stuff, but I think it just it wasn't... I think the pressure was too much on the night. I'm feeling pretty upset and sad that we weren't able to deliver what we wanted to. I feel very embarrassed that I have served food that was not up to par. Even though the judges could see that we were good cooks and we showed some technique, they are there to judge our food and they can only judge us based on what we gave them. Thank you, Peter and Alice, for the gift of your hospitality and for inviting us into this really beautiful home of yours. So now it's time for the scores. The guest teams have given you a combined score of 26 out of 50. Disaster. Now it's our turn and we'll be scoring each dish out of 10. So for your entree, which was the Sunday roast croquette with grandma's relish, I was blown away by your skill at deep frying. You know, you had that lovely crunchy shell on the croquettes, and I definitely thought as a dish its heart was in the right place. But I think there are some adjustments that are needed. The breadcrumbs on the other side, nice and crunchy, and the inside, I just need a little bit more love, a little bit more seasoning, and that relish should have cooked for a little longer. So the score I'm giving you 
is five. The score I'm giving you for your entree is a five. Nigella and Manu's scores were fair. I think that yeah. they were they were kind uh, with the entree being a five. So the main course, you gave us Parmesan crumbed lamb cutlets with minted peas, silver beet, and salsa verde. Now, this was a triumph. To so have to take yourself back in after you had the knock of the entree really shows your talent and your drive and your characters. And those are incredibly important things. Lamb cooked to perfection, crispy on the outside, beautiful crumbs. Just would have loved this salsa verde to be a little bit more runny to drizzle over the top of all that beautiful plate. And the score I'm giving you is eight. Thank you. The score I'm giving you for your main course is an eight. We pulled back with a great main, thanks to the way Alice cooked those chops. Well done, you. Thanks. That's all right. For dessert, you gave us your grandma's lemon delicious pudding. Now, you and I both know what went wrong. We all do, and I don't want to linger on it. It was undercooked, and that's really, that's... We couldn't talk about all other elements, but that's all it was. Those moments are always difficult, but unfortunately, if you did receive a dessert like this in a restaurant, it would go straight back to the kitchen. Sadly, but all I can give you is a one. Unfortunately, the score I'm giving you for your dessert is also a one. I was devastated that we got scored a one for the dessert, but had I been sitting at the table judging that, I wouldn't have given it a score at all. It was raw, unacceptable. I thought a one was generous. I probably just would have said, no, nah, zero. So, Peter and Alice, that gives you a grand total score of 54. After the first instant restaurant, Peter and Alice are on top of the leaderboard with a score of 54. But there are five more instant restaurants to go in this round. Well, at the moment, we're sitting on top of the leaderboard, but we're actually going to screenshot it because we don't think it'll be for long. We're very capable cooks and, unfortunately, the pressure just got the better of us and yeah. a little, I'm a little bit embarrassed. Oh, no, that you oh, absolutely, absolutely, you mustn't be. You can be embarrassed if you just sit there filing your nails. But you, you tried hard and you made us happy. You know, and we had a lovely evening. So please, please don't be embarrassed. Nigella's right, don't beat yourself up. There's no need for that. If you're gonna cook again, I, I know you'll do better next time, but I, I not just a little bit better. I know you'll do a lot better, all right? Thank you. I'm absolutely super proud of Dad. I couldn't have done it without him. It was lovely to have that loyalty in the kitchen because without it, I would have been in the corner rocking. That was nice. OK. <laughs> so, who are we going to have next? Where should we go? I think Kate and Mary next, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to be really impressed. We'll achieve what we need to achieve, mm. and we think perhaps all nines would be great, and that will fast-track us through to the semi-finals. Sleep Good well, luck. thank you. Yeah. That's what we want to achieve. I think we're a threat. Hopefully. Mm. No, hopefully.